mother was in an accident today and scared me half to death and sent me this picture of her car, which looked really bad. There were two other cars had plowed into her. And so I told Jamie, you know, we should go pick her up because she's going to be so upset about being in such a bad accident because she's never been in an accident my whole life that I remember. Well, I take that back. I remember one when I was about 11 years old. But um, at any rate, <laughs> when I called her, she said, no, I just tore the fender off through it in the trunk. I'm fine. She sounded fine, so she drove herself home. All right, let's go sneak up on Jamie. plastic sleeve and then we put a safety cap on it just in case that sleeve were to fail. So let me take more air into our syringe. I'm not pointing it at anybody. <laughs> <laughs> we load up air until we get resistance and kind of like a pop. So then we would put our tailpiece on and what this does is the dart's very heavy and it's unbalanced. So as it's moving through the air, it wants to kind of do this, and the tailpiece kind of gives it some stability as it's flying. So we, we have a failure of a collar in here. You can see it dripping. But basically, uh, it deployed. This sleeve would hit the cat, go back, and then all that drug would be deployed underneath the skin. So our blow dart, this thing costs about $200 and it can do, uh, it can send a dart up to three ml. So it's the largest dart that it can do. The darts are about $15 each and you can shoot them sort of accurately up to 15 yards. It just depends on like, your lung capacity and your skill level as far as uh, aim with the blow dart. Good. So you don't need any specific license to have a blow dart or like the syringes or anything? Um, I think it varies state to state. So it's I mean, the drugs that are the problem. <laughs> yeah, the drugs are, you have to have a vet to transport those. Um, but yeah, this, I don't think here there's any kind of regulation about that. Um, are you kidding? You could have like guns. submachine guns. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's America. <laughs> um, you have your own nuclear weapon in your backyard and your own tiger. So that's a pretty cost effective uh, tool for a place that's on a budget. It's also good for close quarters where you don't want to really traumatize the animal, but you're only doing a small amount of drugs. Um, do you, when, do you, when did you guys switch over? We for still use that. We yeah. use this mainly for uh, doing vaccines because we're only doing one ML. Um, We'll use sometimes a CO2 rifle, but it's just kind of like big and scary for what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And the cats kind of see this almost as like an operant stick, so it's not very mm -hmm. threatening to them. Um, we'll usually have somebody that's helping us, uh, giving the cats treats in that, with an operant stick while we sneak up behind them and, and do the vaccines. So that's about 200 bucks. The This jab stick thing is like $800. Mm -hmm. uh, you can pass it around to you to see how heavy it is. Oh, geez. So it has a three foot <laughs> arm extension that you can put on it, but the arm extension is very light. So when you put that heavy thing on the extension, it has like zero aim. It's impossible to manage that thing. Jamie is deadly with this thing. <laughs> you are so good with it. Do you guys have any questions on the jab stick or the blue dart? Okay. So this was our first um, dart rifle. This is about 150 to 200 dollars. It's just like a BB gun. It's air operated. Um, the bad part about it is when we're using it, it's we're not using this when the cat's in a lockout. It's when it's out in its enclosure or if it was an emergency situation and it had escaped. Um, so to in order to operate this, you would load a dart into the back of it. The darts look a little bit different, um, and we'll see those when we practice. But basically, you just load a dart into the back, you fill it with air, like you've got to guess like one pump goes like five feet, two pumps goes like ten feet, and so then if the cat's 15 feet away, you put three pumps in here and then it walks ten feet closer, you're kind of screwed. <laughs> you have to wait till it moves or you have to hit it harder than you wanted. So it's really not a good option as far as how unpredictable the animals are, but it's the basic option that a lot of places have, especially if they're on a budget. 
So these will be, like I said, about 200 bucks, and the darts are about $8 a piece. Um, they're not reusable. And so this also has a limitation on the size of the dart. And we had this back when we had to use 12 mLs to put down a tiger or a lion. Uh, and this only goes up to four. So in order to tranquilize an animal, we have two of these and a handgun. It's basically the same uh, operation. And we would have to position ourselves to simultaneously dart the animal all at once, which is very difficult. Um, but that's what we had to do back in the day. Uh, so when we built the big cat vacation rotation, this has a very limited um, distance, probably about 30 yards. We needed something that we could dart an animal in the vacation rotation. If it was to get sick and go down in the middle of the enclosure, we wouldn't be able to get in there and get to it. Uh, we did outfit um, the bobcat machine that we have out here. Uh, with some wire caging so that we could drive that into the enclosure if we had to. But we wanted a better option as far as uh, darting and not having to go in the enclosure. So we got this CO2 rifle when we built that enclosure. And so this is about $3,200 for the gun. The darts are anywhere from $27 to $57 a piece. So when Joseph bites one and a half, it makes me sad. Um, <laughs> But the good thing about this gun is it can take a one and a half ml dart, so we can get a lion or a tiger with about two ml of drugs. Uh, it can shoot that 165 yards, so all the way into the middle of the vacation rotation. So it's CO2 operated. We have just those are basic CO. There's nothing. <laughs> we have basic CO2 cartridges that you would use to fill up a bicycle tire. They go in here. Um, we are able to, with this dial, we've made up um, cheap parts. So for like a three ml dart, we're shooting at 20 feet, we need to put three bars of pressure in there. So we can just plug in the pressure right there. And if the cat moves, we can take the pressure out. So we can constantly adjust it as to where the animal is. Um, so this is also has a really nice scope on it uh, that basically anybody that picks up this gun and has to use it can hit what they need to hit. It's very easy. Uh, do you guys have any questions about this? Have we used that yet? Uh, we use it. We use it for um, vaccinations. Sometimes we'll use it uh, if a cat won't go into lockout. We need to dart it for sedation. Um, Joseph's been darted with that thing. He really hates it. Is it loud? No, it's very quiet. It has no kickback. Well, and so we have two different kinds of darts we would use with this. These are just if we were doing a vaccine, or you can pass these around. Uh, if we were doing a sedation for uh, an exam, they're just a smooth needle. And you can see the difference between those and these. These are emergency darts. So they have a collar on them, they're barbed darts. And when they go in, you actually have to surgically remove them to get them out. But that way you know that the animal is not gonna be able to turn around and pluck the dart out as easily anyways. <laughs> And if you're working with primates, they'll pull it out and throw it back at you. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Any questions? Alright, so we're going to play with all these things now. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to take the pressure off and leave so you guys are not embarrassed. <laughs> I thought we'd head out and see if we could find Gail. I know when uh, people are first learning to shoot, they're embarrassed enough by, or there's enough pre pressure, I guess is a better way to put it, by being surrounded by their peers, but I don't want to add to that by recording them live in front of a huge audience. But Jamie's got a target down there, so they'll be practicing on that target. And if they miss, they'll just hit that concrete wall. We send a lot of our people to the safe capture training every couple of years. And so Jamie's been through that training, I don't know how many times, Gail and Connie, Dr. Justin. So this is just kind of an introduction for our interns. 
something that is not going to make them proficient in the field by any means, but will give them some familiarity with the process so that if they go on to other facilities, they take that knowledge with them. I see a tiger tail. Sweet little Zeus's tiger tail. And the one is telling me I've got a really bad wind sound here. I've got my wind sock on. Let's see if I can do something about this. It's been kind of windy. Right when I found out Jamie was going to be doing this course, I was in the process of uploading a couple of videos to YouTube. So the presentation that Honey did on snakes just got uploaded and a walkabout that I did the other day that was handing out Coolaroos is being uploaded right now. And then I hope to do a little short segment from that long one about the Coolaroos about baby cakes, the Janet, the African Janet because we don't have anything on our site about him and he's been here since the year 2000 so um, I know a lot of you really love the little booger so maybe we'll give him his own page even though he's not a cat he's the only animal here who is not a cat looks like we're going from bad wind sound to weed whacker sound <laughs> It's a really noisy day here today, but that's because it's Thursday. I wasn't thinking about that. That's when we do all of our noisy stuff because we're close to the public. But he's coming up behind me on the golf cart. I don't want him to run over me. Hey, Polly. The worst part of trying to ride my bike and videotape is that it uses hand brakes and so if I brake on just one side I'm just gonna spin around in a circle. Ooh, his grass is coming up nice. Or actually I should say her. We're gonna open Andy's cage up and let Priya have access to it and then we'll be able to open up Gabrielle's cage to give her more access to Priya's cage so both of them are gonna get more space while wow, Andy is over on Tiger Lake. Somebody said that on Tiger Lake we had named the wrong cats on each side this morning. I don't know what that was about because that wasn't me. I did a live feed on the kitten cabana, but not on the Tiger Lake. Bobcat sleeping in the tree. My brother's back from vacation. He and the family went to Serbia. Everybody but my mother, I think. My mother and me <laughs> um, went to Serbia. Some of them for two weeks and some for three weeks. Because my, let me think, how is he related? <laughs> Marinko is married to Katie. Katie is our database diva. And she is my brother's daughter. And Marinko is from Serbia, so they went to visit his family, and they said it's very, very beautiful there. Alright, where is Miss Dale? This isn't her golf cart. Uh, that's what we gave you before. I'm looking for Gail. No. Gail? Question mark? Is she out of the project? 
Oh, Victoria um, told me that you said something about the earrings. Yeah, um, usually it takes like two months, but oh, right. they could get here within 30 days. Okay, I leave August. Oh, are you taking a video? I am. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, 240 God. people are hearing about your earrings. So I leave, <laughs> I leave August like um, 20th, so it doesn't get here by then. I can, I'll cancel it. Okay, and then I'll just probably order them later. Because <laughs> okay. I like them a lot. I have a necklace that matches perfectly, so uh, those I had are to pretty. get them. <laughs> Two of the interns had ordered those. Um, I have some earrings that I offer for free. All you have to do is pay $4.95 in shipping. And they're over at catrescue.biz. If you look on the tab called Flash Sale, you can find them. But two of the interns had ordered them. And they come from China, so for me to be able to offer them for free and only pay $4.95 in shipping, it means it takes like two months for them to get to you. So. I was afraid they wouldn't still be here when their earrings arrived and I wanted to let them know that if the earrings didn't get here before their internships are over I would just refund their money because there's always somebody here who wants to buy a set of the earrings and I'll just have them on hand to do that. They're really pretty. They're tiny little paw prints. Alright, we'll head back out to Nikita then. I'm going to take the back way so it's not as windy though. Uh, Debbie, thank you for the kind review of those earrings. If you guys have gotten any of those earrings from me, it would be wonderful if you would go to catrescue.biz and give me a review on them. That helps other people know that they're really cute. Looks like there was some opera going on. I could tell because she had a stick and she had a little pouch around her waist where they keep the meat. I know, Crystal, isn't it beautiful? Everything's so green. I love it green. Why are you sleeping beside the Kularu? It's supposed to be on it. camera this way where the speakers are toward the back and maybe they won't pick up as much wind. Tonight is family dinner. The family gets together every couple of weeks together on usually on a Thursday night and we all pull a bunch of tables together because we're such a huge family and have family dinner so that'll be fun. Since my mother's car is wrecked, I've got to drive home early today and go pick up the food in a car because I can't do it on my bike. Now, this is interesting. Look at this really dead tree. I asked them to save the tree to take off the dead stuff. It looks like what they're doing. Welcome back, brother. <laughs> Actually, looking for Gail. Oh, I think she's over here. All right, we're halfway there. Now it feels golf cart. Oh, 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 oh. Gail. Uh, she's right there. Thank you. Huh? Are you going out? Yeah, just Hello. Hi, Facebook Live. <laughs> I'm so happy this is getting done. I think we just found another yellow jacket nest. <laughs> well, tell us about your morning. Um, well, um, Daniel was spraying for mosquitoes 
and he got stung by something and came back and told me there was a wasp nest. So we took wasp spray and we went out. Only turns out it's a yellow jacket nest under the ground and they just swarmed us and I got stung like four times. He got stung uh, once more and... Um, Can you tell people where it was close to? Um, it's, well, it's back over there. It's actually, see those two trees right there? Yeah. It's on the, it's inside, uh, well, actually, I think it's that little, the four trees right there. It's in a little, on, on the other side. So it's not where people normally walk. But he was spraying for mosquitoes, so he kind of just stepped on the ground. Because yellow jackets build their nest underground. So if you walk on their nest, they it kind of irritates them. And so, and they don't give up. They are very vicious. Uh, they chased us all the way down to Gabby. <laughs> It and kept stinging. A, and that's a long way. Um, Where all they get you? Uh, I got. I just finished eating lunch and I'm gonna double check the cougars. What do you want me to do after I'm done with that? Uh, come to the project at Nikki Lion, please. Um, on the cheek, on the chin, on the neck, and then uh, through my shorts on my leg. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Well, yeah. you took Benadryl right away, and they're not swelling at all. They a little bit, but I we uh, we took a Benadryl immediately, and then we iced. Oh, well, we put that accent. Oh yeah, the, yeah, the meat, the meat tenderizer. <laughs> we did that with water, and you, I had it smeared like all over my face and down my neck and all over my leg. So we did that immediately, and then once we put that on, took a Benadryl, and then um, iced over the top of all of that. Wow. <laughs> so I think that helped. But uh, my history with yellow jackets is not great. The first time I ever got stung by yellow jackets out here was when I was a registered the first time in 2003. And I was walking around one of the serval cages way over in the serval section and there was a yellow jacket nest around the edge of the thing. And I walked by and got stung and couldn't figure out where I came through and turned around to walk out to leave the cage and got stung again. So I had two stings on my leg and they both turned like really dark purple and red and I had to go to the doctor they got infected so I will be keeping a good eye on these to make sure because I had twice now I've had to go get antibiotics because of my reaction to them so I'm it's hoping a few years ago that my dad stirred up a yellow jacket nest over there by Funcation before Funcation was built and yep. he couldn't run from them so they got him like over a hundred times yeah it, they are they are nasty nasty little things they they don't give up they don't like bees. They don't, they're not bees. Like bees will sting once and then it's like it's all over. Mm, no. They can just go. They can machine gun you. It's like wow. crazy. That's terrible. So, Do you think that's maybe what's been bothering Nikita from time to time? You know, we keep thinking it's a fly, but could it be bees? Oh, no. She's got big horse flies. Oh. That's what that thing is over there that somebody gave us. Yeah, I need to move it, floor. though. I think I'm going to move it back over here in the sun because it really needs... Uh, like all day long full sun because the ball there's a big black ball underneath it that heats up and when it heats up the heat and the darkness of it attracts them oh cool I and then once they get up under there they can't go anywhere they go into this little tray so I need to but it's like down in the ground so I got to get I got it like twisted out of the ground it's not going to be easy <laughs> so but I want to move it over here once she if she starts coming out here I want to move it over here where it'll be in the sun. I noticed uh, Aries and Orion were out this morning Yay. walking around down at this far end and there was a big horse fly. It must have been that long. Kept landing on Aries and he kept going like this and I'm like, run buddy, run! The fly's <laughs> after you. It's a big horse fly. Oh, yeah. They're nasty. Can you tell people what you're doing here? Uh, well, there was a huge bamboo plant in this little section right here that was growing up through the roof and um, we needed to be able to see the roof. So we dug it all out and it grows up. It only up took these... like, what, three years? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, we were just talking about that. I think it's been a, a, uh, almost two that we've been trying to dig this bamboo up because what happens when the shoots start to come back up, they're really sharp because they come up in these really sharp uh, things. So we blocked it off from Nikki so she couldn't get to it because she kept trying to walk around it back over here and she kept stepping on the little sharp things. So we blocked it off and we dug it up and finally after a year and a half, we I think we finally sort of killed it. Um, so we dirted it all back in and now we're taking the wall out and then we'll patch that wall and then she'll have 
once we clean all this up, she'll have access to this section again. It looks like it's time to mow in her other cage already. <laughs> uh, well, that was Jeez. what I was going to do today <laughs> until the yellow jackets got me. And then I'm like, no, nah, I'm going to stay, just stay away from over there. And this hadn't been done. We'd done that, but we hadn't done this. So this needs to be done. So yeah, we'll do this and then shut her over and then we'll do that. So has Daniel got something for the yellow jacket? He's going to spray, but I think he had to go do his other calls today. And then I'm hoping that he'll come back later on today. If not, I'll text him and see what time he's coming. Because there's one out in the field. There's one over here. And I'm just going to have him, if he can, spray over here where we think there might be one. It's not where the keepers walk. It's kind of like in the middle. They were trimming some palmettos and um, Sam got stung on the hand. Mm. And I'm like, well, did it come from the ground? Or did it come sideways at you? Or did it come up this way? He said it came out of sideways, but I looked at all those palmettos and I can't find, I call them, we call them sweat bees or um, Deer paper, paper wasps, um, the little tiny paper wasps. Uh, they're really nasty too, not as bad as yellow jackets, but I didn't, I, I went all the way around there and I didn't see any nest to spray. So I told him just leave those alone and come on, let's get the inside done. So.